What's the word, y'all? Chris Dasporzigis is a Boston Celtic, which means that Malcolm Brogdon is, is a Clipper and Marcus Morris is a Wizard. There's going to be some draft compensation. As I'm recording this video, I don't know exactly what that draft compensation is, Wizards fans, so I cannot tell you whether or not you won or lost a straight. Uh, but I think any move that you do at this point where you're shedding salary or getting rid of the current core is going to be a dub. I, I know the Bradley Beal went tough because you didn't get any draft capital back for the second leader score in your franchise history. But still, washing your hands. You're going to forget about all of this. You know what I'm saying? Chris, that's where Zingis is a Boston Celtic. And I, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know. The Clippers are expected to trade pick number 30 um, to the Wizards. S so that... <laughs> hey! You got more in this trade than you did for the Bradley Beal trade, Wizards fans. 30th overall pick. Jimmy Butler was drafted 30th overall years back. So, you know, just got to find the guy. I cannot lie, man. I really, really do like the idea of Chris Stapps Porzingis being on the Boston Celtics. Obviously, the biggest question mark regarding Chris Stapps Porzingis has always been the health. Um, last year, he had the healthiest season of his young, young career. He's been around for a minute. The healthiest season of his career playing like 65 his games. And I think the last seven of those games, the Washington Wizards themselves decided to shut him down because they were going for higher draft lottery odds. So he could have potentially played a 70-game season. We knew that the Boston Celtics could not just run it back for the 100th year in a row. They needed to make some changes. Some people thought it might have been Jalen Brown because he's up for that $300 million extension. They think it was really realistic to trade Jalen Brown away and still think that you could contend. It's not a lot of things out there that you could potentially get that will upgrade that. So instead, they make some changes around the outside, and that is trading the sixth man of the year, Malcolm Brogdon, and getting back Chris Stapps Porzingis. Malcolm Brogdon and Chris Stapps Porzingis have the same question marks um, attached to them, right? When they are playing, they're they're pretty pretty good. I mean, we just saw the sixth man of the year, Malcolm Brogdon. But... It's the, it's the when they are playing. So I see this as a kind of shuffling of the deck for the Boston Celtics. The cost is not really, really high. Both of these players are going to the last year of their contract because Chris Desperzing has opted into it. And well, we got to the playoffs uh, this season, and we did see the injured version of Malcolm Brogdon. And already they have this log jam as far as primary ball handlers or, or people that you trust with the ball in their hands, whether it be Derek White, whether it be Marcus Smart, or the Jays. That's four guys right there. And then though Malcolm Brog is one of the steady forces with him winning six-man of the year, there still is a log jam at the position. And one of the positions they could have used some help at was the big position. Because again, uh, you, you have the injury history. Robert Williams has been struggling to stay healthy over the last couple seasons. So I, I just think that if you can convince yourself that Chris Dasporzingis can stay relatively healthy, this feels like a real dub to me. And though he doesn't have the defensive versatility of Al Horford, obviously, I mean, Al Horford is 30, 37 years old. Like, how long could we expect Al Horford to be at least a decent NBA player? You know, is he going to play until he's 40 and still give you quality, quality minutes? I don't know. And this feels like a little bit of reassurance. Again, it's a one-year rent to, but it could turn into something longer term, depending on how the connection really works. Joe Mazzulla is going to have to really figure out how to work this rotation. And I'm assuming that he will be able to do it with the full offseason ahead of him. But I like the I feel like when the Boston Celtics were at their best last season, it's when they made the adjustment. Ime Udoka made the adjustment to let Robert Williams be like the Romer instead of saying like, hey, that's a center, you're a center, guard him 24-7. And allow Robert Williams to really showcase how good of a defensive player he can be. And this also allows that to be the case. I think that poor Zingas... And Robert Williams can play. Robert Williams can play real minutes together, mostly because Porzingis has been a lights out three point shooter offensive side of the ball, and he's one of the premier rim deterrence and rim protection players in the league. And if you look at it right here, he's in the 97th percentile in rim defense. We're talking about Chris Stapps Porzingis, and when it comes to rim frequency, he's at the 92 percentile. And this just says that hey, when he is on the court and there's a shot at the rim, he's the one contesting it 46 percent of the time, and then he allows this percentage less when he's on the court at the rim than uh, any other to play on the team. So he's been really, really good defensively. Of course, we had seasons where he averaged two plus blocks. This was not a super block heavy season for him, but we know he can do that. I mean, he shot 38% from three last year. And for the most part, that has been relatively normal. The season before that was 31%, but the years before that was 37 and 36. So if you just nix out the one year where he was traded and also going through a lot of injuries, he's been a floor spacer. And we're not just talking about foot on the line, three point shooter. Poor, poor Zingas be shooting it from the half court line if you allow him to, and he's been able to knock it down. Yeah, I think he is. I think he's gone from 
a guy that um, everybody. Well, I was personally excited for him when he got traded to the Dallas Mavericks. Obviously, that flamed out. It didn't work the way they wanted it to. They traded him for a Spencer Dinwiddie and Davis Bertans, like a really, really small package. And I think he re-upped that trade value and showcased to the world, hey, I know I was an all-star when I was earlier. I still got that. I mean, he was a borderline all-star this season. So, again, I see this for the Celtics as, as an opportunity to move some things around and to, to really change things up at the end of the day. Flipping it to the Clippers side of things, they've been looking for a point guard for as long as this Kawhi Leonard, Paul George thing has been something. And, and Malcolm Brogdon had the one year, of course, where he was the sixth man of the year. But before that, he's been a high-quality starting point guard for pretty much every year of his career, going back to his rookie season. And Malcolm Brogdon isn't the type of point guard that I think a lot of people think about when they think about what the Clippers need. I always think about a guy that can just get people in their spots. Oh, oh like Chris, Chris Paul is available. And I guess this trade means that Chris Paul is not going to be a Clipper. Or maybe it, maybe he can still be a Clipper, and Malcolm Brod just re resumed the roles as a six man. But I'm assuming as of right now, this is them saying like, "Hey, Malcolm, you're going to be our starting point guard." It's been a couple years since we see Malcolm uh, Brod that end up being that floor general type dude, and that was the years where he was overtaxed in Indiana. Um, and last year they allowed him to just feel it out. Sometimes he was the offensive threat. Sometimes he was here or there with the Boston Celtics and he was great there. But if you just look at the previous point guards that have been on this Clippers roster doing the Kawhi Leonard, Paul George thing, Malcolm Brock is undoubtedly going to be the best guy there. Again, similar to Porzingis, the big question mark is, hey, how, how healthy can he be for a full season plus the postseason and a team that already has two players on their roster, two stars in their roster that struggle to stay healthy? Maybe it's not the best fit, but this is, a, this is an attempt worth taking because this is one of the most expensive teams in basketball, right? Like, undoubtedly, I think they're number two or number three or something like that. Would Malcolm Brog to be on the last year of his deal if this experiment doesn't work out? You could just wipe your hands of it and save a little bit of money right before that second apron comes in. And, and given what you gave up, I've talked to Clippers fans. None of them are Marcus Morris fans. I tell you that a lot of a lot of them are trying to get Marcus Morris off the team for a minute. So you trade Marcus Morris in a 30th overall pick to upgrade to a guy that was six man of the year, upgrade to a guy we see be a 50, 40, 90 guy early in his career, and upgrade a position that was a real need for you. I see this as an absolute dub. The, the questions, of course, of course, of course, is can they keep Porzingis healthy and can they keep Malcolm Brogdon healthy? It's yet to be seen, but both of them are coming off relatively healthy seasons. Amir Coffey is also in this trade. Amir Coffey's cool. I like Amir Coffey's game. You know what I'm saying? Wizards fans, there you go. You gave up Isaiah Todd, and you gave up uh, Jordan Goodwin, and now you got Amir, Amir Coffey in the 30th overall pick. Oh, man. Um, well, Wizards fans, I, this, is, this is what the start of a rebuild is like um, when you wait a little bit too long to make it happen. Like... A lot of teams that have been able to hit that reset button at the right time end up trading Paul George for 17 first-round picks and Shea Gilles Alexander, trading Russell Westbrook for this and that, and then you end up with a million first-rounders you draft well. This, what you see in between Bradley Beal and Porzingis, your two best players being traded away for practically just the 30th overall pick, just showcase that you waited too long. I know this is a new regime, and, and you have to just give them the benefit of the doubt. You take what you could get, um, and what you could have got in this scenario was a 30th overall pick. And Amir Coffey. 30th overall pick in Amir Coffey. That is crazy. I don't know, man. I just, I really like the Porzingis fit defensively, bro. I just can't stop thinking about it. Because he can play alongside Al Horford if you need him to. He can play alongside Robert Williams if you needed to. And he is, re throughout the last couple of seasons, he's been a relatively low-maintenance guy. And that's what you want. Play good defense, get your shots up when they're there, and, and nothing more, nothing less. And I think a lot of people are going to realize how good Porzingis really is because he's no longer in the market of Washington. That was like no man's land when it comes to NBA talent, and now he's on a premier team that is trying to compete for a championship. I think a lot of the questions you might see on TV over the next couple of days is, does this trade make the Boston Celtics the favorite out east? I'm not going that far because that's not even a question worth answering before free agency and all of the other dominoes fall um, in, in this offseason. But boy... I really like this trade for two out of the three teams. Um, I wonder if this is going to be the, the these are going to be the biggest trades of the next couple days. Obviously, there's a lot of rumors with the draft being tomorrow and stuff. But these are two really, really big trades between Porzingis and Bradley Beal. Those are big, big names. And I, I don't want to be disappointed going into this draft thinking that we're going to see a Z or we're going to see a Lillard or see something like that. If this is all we got, I'm, I think I'll be cool with it. This is how you, sub you subvert the expectations. So if nothing happy, you're not sad. But if something do happen, you, you know what I'm saying? You're super excited. Also, a little known thing about this trade means that 
the Celtics will not be able to retain um, Greg Williams, which is which is interesting. I think that uh, Missoula didn't really love Greg Williams for whatever reason. Last year when he was with Ime Udoka, Grant played a lot of big minutes. He had some really big shots in that one series. Um, and then when it came to this year's playoffs, he didn't really get a lot of burn. And now he's going to be out. He's going to be out there for the taking for some other team. And he's a quality NBA player. And I wonder what type of market we're going to see for Grant Williams. Wait a minute. Hold on. One last thing. I know I'll be trying to get these videos out real fast. These are always my initial reactions. Of course, I'm not married to the initial reactions. But I want to go back. What, what did he? So the Pacers traded away Malcolm Brogdon for Daniel Tice and a first round pick that was what? 27th, right? 27th overall pick. So basically... Brad Stevens turned Daniel Tice in the 27th overall pick to poor Zingas in one year's time. That's insane. That, that's why I'm in the video. Brad Stevens is a good NBA coach. He, he might be a better front office dude. That's, that's crazy.